have the API, which is also called the messaging protocol. Some of the pros. It provides access to all aspects of the JAZZ internals. Anything that you can do on a JAZZ, you can do through the API. Anything. Everything that's available. Every device, every command for every device that's available is available through the API. Doesn't matter what it is, it's available. It's dynamically built on what's found in the stack, so when you don't have a spectrometer, spectrometer that, that module doesn't run, so your API knows that, and it doesn't perform any of the functions to do with that. It can be used for any kind of application you have an algorithm for. So if you've got an algorithm for something that has to do with anything that's available on a JAS, you can do it in the API. It doesn't matter how complicated it is. One of the biggest cons is incomprehensible to a non-programmer. It requires supporting documentation for each module to expose its functionality. So when a new module comes out, not only do we have to write the software to control that module, the firmware to control that module, we also have to document it, put it in a manual, and say, now this is available as an API function, here's how you use it. And this kind of goes back to the, the incomprehensible. It's much more complicated to implement. You do have to have certain programming abilities in order to implement an API application. But it's doable. One of the big things with the API is interaction with each possible device is unique. So they all the commands are different. So there's different ways you communicate with each of them. So we simplify that through the API. There's a large number of commands for each device. Spectrometer may, may not have so many commands, but a LAMP module or the Indy may have a lot of commands that are available, a lot of things you can do. And those are all enumerated in the API. We have written a lot of helper functions for things like uh, file access, and we're doing a lot of the file system stuff where you don't have to go through the 10 step process of opening a file, going to the file, doing this, doing that, making sure everything's that, you know, is correct. You can just say open file and that function exists. That gives the user freedom to do what they want and need to do. So no matter what it is that you want to do, you can do it. So we're back to our little pictures. We've got our jazz running here with all our daemons and an application layer and a jazz API. Your application runs in between those two layers. It's using the API and you have an application. So that's kind of running in the middle of those two. That is then communicating with the API. So now our little go get spectrum example, get a spectrum, one, two, three, or right now, one, two, three steps. You've gone directly to the spectrometer through the dispatch, as you're talking directly to the dispatch. You told dispatch, go get me a spectrum. It went and got the spectrum and came back. So when we saw the scripter, I did that scripter example, we had to go through three, we went through six steps to get a spectrum. Here we got one, two, three, four. When you're writing your software, you're going to be doing it on a Linux PC. And that Linux PC in your application is going to communicate directly with this batch. This is going to kind of be gone for that time being. And you're going to be using this instead of this layer. So you're going to be writing it over here and running it over here. Everything is going to be executing on the jazz like you were running it on the jazz, but you'll get your debugging and your, the ability to do your debugging and all that on your PC. Otherwise, you run an application, you wouldn't have any idea whether it was working or if it did work, why, why if it didn't work, why it broke. Here, you're able to run debuggers. We use a couple of different debuggers and things that, that we use that are readily available. One was called Valgrind, and the other one's called GDB. And they're just debugging tools. That you can debug a Linux C program. So that's, that's how that works. That's how that operates. That's how you're the application would be developed. What types of applications do we do? We do sophisticated things. We do things that are pretty complicated. Because you, you can do, you've got a lot of power there. You've got the freedom 
to do whatever you need to do while you're on, in your application. You're not limited by anything that we tell you. In Scripter or in JSL, remember, you're limited by what we tell you you're allowed to do. Here, you're allowed to do whatever it is you want to do. There are some guidelines and some rules that you have to follow, but you can do whatever you need to do. Anything that you don't want to run on a PC. If you want to do something really complicated on that Jazz and you don't want to have to have a PC, you want to take it from place to place to place and not have to worry about lugging the PC around, API application is a good way to go because it has the capability of doing that. It has the power to do that. So in, in, as a summary of what you can do with this, it's anything. Anything that you can have an algorithm, anything that you can do, you can do an API. 